guys. So if you guys got the chance to watch um, some of the stuff that's going on, you know we're in a pretty exciting spot here in the sport of bodybuilding. I don't know if the, I don't know how, how many of you know that, um, but uh, there's there's some people out there that really have an interest in it, um, but more that don't. Why is that? Because and we're un we're un freaking uneducated about it, right? Um, what does that mean? Well, just give you an example of uh, of the UFC mixed martial arts and everything else. I was I was always a fan of that, right? Of uh, of martial arts, martial sciences. But as far as the whole cage thing, just threw me off. I was really ignorant, okay? And this is from coming from a guy who already likes martial arts, and I thought, man, it's like a cockfight with people and all this, right? Because even in even in blood sport, right? It was an open it was an open thing, right? Um, not a cage, okay, like a fence. And it just seemed like more outdoors ish and, and kind of brutal and you know, street fight thing, but it's nothing like that, right? Um, can a street just excel in something like that? Initially, of course he can because he's already used to right, brawling it out. Probably more so than than the fluff and buff, you know, martial arts like a taekwondo where you you do actually connect and the guy goes down and oh his nose bleeds and he, he can't continue because he's not he's used to getting hit, okay? So you know, Street Fighter will have a little bit of an advantage going in because he's used to punching, okay, taking a hit, continuing on, but usually very bad habits develop, right? Or somebody who's been trained martial arts all their, their whole life, um, probably gonna take that that street guy out, right? Especially if he's very good. Um, and even if that street fight is very, very good unless he's been brought up with martial arts, and that's where he, um, what he's using in the street. Um, it's not, it's not going to happen the, until he gets the proper training. Now, yeah, he can, if he's got the discipline and the mindset and the coaches are willing to work with him because he's not a loose cannon, yeah, he can, be, he can become a champion possibly, right? I mean, anybody can be potentially a champion with the right heart and the right mindset and, the right, and, and their passion and, and their desire to do well in sports. But my point is, I had no desire to watch the UFC. I thought it was a little bit barbaric. That came from me, right? This is this a long time ago, back when it was really underground and stuff. So it's it's like high school and shit. When I first, you know, would catch a glimpse of it, I'm like, nah, ain't for me. Walk away, right? Um, as I got older, it seemed a little bit more intriguing, right? But I never thought of it, you know, to the level that it really was because I never followed it. And then I started watching just a, on pure accident, right? I'm flipping through channels. And I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. So I'm watching these little battles they do in the team against team and the ultimate fighter, right? And then I'm starting to catch on. I was like, man, this is, this is a brutal sport. This is like one of, the, one of the craziest things there is. And these are some of the greatest athletes in the entire world. They've got great stamina, muscular endurance, strength, striking. Uh, they got grappling skills, ground and pound. They got... In a pull guard, they know how to do these crazy kinds of things, right? Rear naked choke, right? Crazy shit. Uh, Superman punch, right? Spinning kicks, a lot of them are high, but I mean, a lot of them are low, but it was well. You get a stun that'll hit one high, dude doesn't pay attention, boom. Lights out, man down. Um, it's a chess match, it's, you gotta be a good wrestler, you gotta be a good um, striker, you gotta be a good. Um, you gotta be good on and off the ground both. And it's just, there's just so many things to it. You gotta use knees, you gotta use elbows, right? You gotta defend, you gotta attack. Um, it's just, it's a, just fascinating sport. So what happens when you get the right promoters involved? Boom, passes up everything, right? My sport, which is down here with a little ways in popularity, fair enough. You know, say that, I agree that Basketball might be a little bit more popular, especially in the NBA and stuff, than, than bodybuilding, right? How about football, <laughs> right? Um, baseball even, right? Um, probably even golf, okay? Tennis, I mean, these are sports I never, I never watch golf or tennis, right? Too slow. Um, so I know somebody and they start having a, a great respect for, for that as well because it's, it's incredibly 
it's incredibly intense and challenging at that level of any fucking thing, right? But uh, bodybuilding was higher up in the popularity than mixed martial arts, right? And then as soon as they started getting that reality series TV, UFC, Dana White gets involved, all these different types of promoters and the right people, the right time, the right way to get things done. They had to do a bunch of shit, man. They got a bunch of red tape. It was no limit, right? There was no time, no time set. So just until somebody submitted or it got knocked out, okay? Um, then the time just kept going and going and going until there was a winner, right? Um, so they made time restraints, right? Just like in wrestling or any other sport. I like to use wrestling more than anything else because it's it's a little bit more comparable, okay? Because like football is 15 minute quarters, right? These are five or sometimes three. Five are the, you know, the championship fights. The little guys, the, uh, I call them little guys, I don't care if it's three three-minute rounds or five three-minute rounds. In the, in the not a title fight, it's usually three three-minute rounds. It's still brutal, right? Just just go out and go balls to the wall in a fight one of these days. Just go 30, to, 30 seconds to a minute, okay? And you're going to be tired if you're not trained for it, okay? I guarantee if you're coming off the couch, you're going to be feeling like cardiac arrest after 30 seconds to a minute, okay? Now, just imagine three minutes. That's one round. 30 minutes, 30 second rest, you're right back out there. Three more minutes. Another 30 second rest, you're back out there again. It's nine minutes. Of, of, uh, sometimes you gotta go balls to the wall the whole time. You know, if you're a fucking crazy psycho man like fucking Nightmare Sanchez, right? Somewhere like that, you pace it a little bit more. You know, and not quite as crazy, but you get so you're tired as a motherfucker, right? And gets anybody that's been pushing the evil believe a little bit. You have against Stephen Bonner, you just, any of those fucking guys, right? Or, uh, Forrest Griffin. Those guys push the fight, man. Those good Diaz. Those guys are just, like, fucking Tasmanian devils the whole time. They don't slow down at a wall, right? It's like a sprint that whole time. So imagine going against one of those motherfuckers. Five, five minute rounds. That's 25 minutes. And if you've ever wrestled, three, two minute rounds, even when you're in shape, it's kind of like, whew, damn. You gotta go over there like, all right, you know, I'm in shape for this, but here we go, right? But until you're in that wrestling shape, first few weeks of practice, you feel like you're gonna fucking die, right? Even if you come in shape, you know, five minute, five mile runs every day, right? Sometimes training two, three, four times a, a, a day, but you haven't wrestled yet, right? If you do that, that's a fucking mistake. I have five. Five uh, workouts a day sometimes over the course of the summer, and I'd get gassed in 30 seconds of wrestling because I wasn't used to that. Muscular endurance part of it, okay? And I was even lifting weights. You gotta wrestle, get in wrestling shape. So these guys gotta be in wrestling shape. They gotta be in karate, in karate shape, boxing shape, judo shape. These guys gotta do it all. So it's exhausting, right? But these guys got those time limits, okay? They got weight limits because it before no weight limit, right? And freaking dad gum. They made it so it was 100% legal. There's no more of this stuff where they could freaking knee in people's faces when they're on the ground, right? As soon as the knee touches, you can strike, but you cannot, you cannot knee no head button, okay? They changed a bunch of the rules. They made it tolerable to the public. They made it safer, right? Because you can still get them really fucked up, right? Punch, punch drunk, brain dead, CTE like the fucking football players, right? You know, it's still going to take a lot of hits to the head and stuff like that, even with the new rules, right? So, but now it's more tolerable, it's safer, the public is okay with it, right? In fact, most of the public fucking loves it, right? Except for maybe, you know, these little guys got to, you know, one of these little things like a vagina, right? You know, and they can't take it. Uh, but a lot of men, women, and children that love to watch UFC. I mean, nothing wrong with that. It's a gift. It's a fucking sport. It's a it's a science, right? A lot of things to it. But my point is something that was negatively stigmatized more so than bodybuilding, right? It was considered more dangerous than bodybuilding. It was considered um, more ridiculous, 
right? Um, more, more everything, right? Um, and then it went just right, it went just right past the body, really, right? Just, 